Okay, so we chose to do Scorpions, and it is by Mara, Taylor, Elijah, and Jacob. Alright, so a scorpion belongs to the group of invertebrates called arachnids. They are eight-legged, and they are characterized by their pair of pinchers and um, their curved tail, which is usually tipped with a venomous stinger. Alright, so the scorpions use sense of smell to find, um, to hide from danger, and um, they rely on vibrations in their surroundings to tell what's going on around them. And um, they usually range in size from 0.09 to 20 centimeters. And under a UV light, uh, they glow due to fluorescent uh, chemicals in their exoskeleton. Alright, so we're talking about the death stock for scorpion. They are usually straw yellow in um, color, and they um, have really uh, thin pinchers, which um, um, leads to them having a very venomous um, poison. All right, and as you can tell in this picture, um, their their um, end of their stinger usually is darker in color. All right, and that's a picture of their fluorescent under UV light, what they look like, the glow. All right, so their stinger is also known as aerosoma, and it's segmented. Uh, the final segment is where the stinger is located, and in that segment, there's some glands where the venom is held. And that side is also called the pelvis. Mm -hmm. And that is a picture of the stinger up close, and as you can see, it's like, and this is where the venom would be at. All right, so for growth and development, um, there's two types of development, the apoicogenically, <clears throat> which means that there's a yolk for the development of a scorpion, and then there's catoicogenically, and there's no yolk, but kind of depends on the um, mother's nourishment. Um, scorpions molt many times before becoming adults, so <clears throat> their molt is an extension of embryological um, development, and they grow their new exoskeleton during that time. Um, they shed their exoskeleton up to like seven times um, when they molt, and then the function of the stinger is also um, occurs when they're molting, um, and growth development also occur, occurs in terrestrial adaptation, which is like when they're searching for prey and everything. And this is a this is a picture of when they're not fully um, developed, and then the second picture is when they are. So you can see how it kind of hardens and becomes kind of a darker color. Alright, so their venom um, is made up of toxins, made up of neurotoxins, histamine, um, serotonin enzymes, and more. Um, so it's, uh, neurotoxins is a poison that acts as a um, that acts on the nervous system. Uh, histamine is a compound that is released by cells in response to injury, allergic, and inflammatory reactions. Serotonin is present in the serum that constricts the the blood vessels next as a neurotransmitter, and enzymes act as a catalyst, which increases the rate of chemical reactions to bring about a specific biochemical reaction, and more. These are used by the scorpion um, in defense and capturing their prey. All right, so more about their venom. Uh, the fact that the picture correlates with the how effective their venom is, and so like with the death stock Stalker scorpion, and as Taylor said previously, they have smaller pinchers, and so their venom is more deadly. And if it was had larger pinchers and was had a better capability of holding onto its prey, then it wouldn't have the need to have deadly venom because it doesn't need to do that. So, like I said, the best stalker scorpion has the strongest poison of any scorpion, and if you do get stung by one, you will experience extreme pain, uh, convulsions, paralysis, and there's sometimes death due to heart and respiratory failure. Scorpions are found in the subtropics and the tropics. Um, they're mainly nocturnal, um, so 
so they spend their day in hiding. Um, they're found in every continent except Antarctica. Wonder why? Okay. Um, there are 45 species of um, scorpions found in Arizona alone, and there are approximately 2,000 species of scorpions found worldwide, except for Antarctica. And the death stalker scorpion is found in dry desert areas <clears throat> and dry scrublands in North Afri Northern Africa and in the Middle East. Um, they prefer a dry climate and um, <clears throat> makes its home by burrowing and under stones. Okay, for the threats of the population, there's a habitat destruction. Um, like when rainforests are, you know, cut down everything, that kind of destroys the habitat. Um, and humans killing scorpions, what I mean by that is like with pesticides when, you know, they're in the homes or something, um, they killed off the scorpions. And then naturally there are predators such as uh, lizards, birds, and bats, some others. But um, yeah, so when they fight and everything. Okay. And then the pet trade. Okay, so the importance of this animal for medical research, uh, many scorpions obviously have venoms, and in the venom there's a chemical called chlorotoxin, and this blocks signals from cancerous cells, and so it stops them, like it stops them metastasizing, and so they stop growing, and it can also light up brain tumors, and along with that there's also some venoms that cause temporary paralysis, and this can be useful in surgeries if someone needs to stay completely still, like if you move the vet, you're dead, so and ways they are helpful in therapy. Uh, the venom from a death soccer is a possibility for an effective way to treat brain cancer, not cure, treat. And an article from ACS.org said that the venom allows therapeutic genes to reach more cancerous brain cells than other techniques that they have previously used. And the chlorotoxin that lights up the cancerous cells comes from the death soccer. Are one of the oldest venomous species on earth. Scorpion venom lights up tumors. The toxin has an only goal just to cut out cancer cells with more accuracy than ever before. It's the night before surgery, and Tracy Cox is nervous. Being injected with a green fluorescent goo, chemically concocted from a dead stalker, scorpion venom. I know it's risky. She's one of just 21 people suffering brain tumors to undergo the revolutionary treatment. Under laser light, the neurosurgeon can spot the cancerous tissue shining brightly. Well, sometimes you can't see what's tumor and what's normal brain. So, but this chemical binds only onto tumor cells. The tumor paint was pioneered in the US. What we did was we attached a little molecular flashlight to that, and so we put it into the bloodstream. The scorpion toxin binds the cancer cells and drags the flashlight into them and makes them glow brilliantly. This is the navigation. Tell us exactly where we're at. This international trial is to test the dosage, the highest used so far, 18 milligrams. Now we're and we're also maintaining safety. It's painstaking surgery, cutting in the dark, guided by the light. So you can immediately see even a few hundred cancer cells compared to the normal brain around it. We caught up with Tracy two weeks later. Okay, so as you can see, it's been a pretty successful, but it's also a really risky surgery to do because, like I said, there can be heart failure. Otherwise, it just won't work, and it's in, you're performing
doing surgery in the dark and using uh, glowing cancer cells to, you want to take them out, so it's pretty risky surgery, so you got to be pretty brave to go into that. And then lastly, we just 